few Minnesota crimes are as well known as the unsolved abduction of Jacob Wetterling. Uh, sadly, 26 years later, mostly everyone remembers Jacob's name. But you've likely never heard of Jared. Just months before the Wetterling kidnapping, a stranger grabbed Jared from a town not far from where Jacob would be abducted. For the first time in years, Jared sat down with Esme Murphy to talk about what happened that night and a string of similar attacks. Here's Esme Murphy with that story that originally aired on WCCO last May, but is certainly worth seeing again. Six weeks after Jacob Wetterling was kidnapped, the FBI announced there was another victim. And these facts match up with Jacob's abduction. Nine months before Jacob was taken, a 12-year-old boy named Jared was walking home at night in neighboring Cold Spring. These uh, guys had stepped out of the vehicle. Uh, approached me from behind, said, I have a gun, I'm not afraid to use it. The man, who had a police scanner in his car, drove Jared to this remote site, sexually assaulted him, then let him go. I was dropped off and told to run, uh, don't look back, or he would shoot. It's a threat almost identical to the one described by Jacob's friend, Aaron. He grabbed Jacob and then he told me to run as fast as I could into the woods or else he'd shoot. For Jared, the weeks after the Wetterling abduction were filled with grueling interviews with law enforcement. They brought me to a point where I broke down, where I mentally broke down, you know, just physically exhausted, and I didn't have the answer, and they wanted the answer, and I couldn't provide that. So my parents made that decision um, that we should move. Jared left Cold Spring, and for 25 years, anniversaries passed with no answers and no arrests. I learned how to um, focus on other things. But that changed last August when Jared was contacted by Joy Baker, the author of a detailed blog on the Wetterling case. She says, are, are you the Jared I'm looking for? Baker had uncovered newspaper articles about a series of sexual assaults in Painesville in 1986 and 1987 two years before Jared and Jacob's kidnappings. Painesville is just a few miles from where both boys were abducted, and the police reports and newspaper articles reveal striking parallels between the cases. The boys are attacked at night as they are heading home. Some are on bikes. They are sexually assaulted. The attacker wears a mask, has a low voice, and threatens victims with a knife or gun. Jared believes the same person who took him not only took Jacob, but is also behind the Painesville attacks. When I first seen him, there was a big sigh. There was kind of like a, I'm not the only one that has made eye contact with this person. For the past nine months, Jared has worked with blogger Joy Baker to try and encourage witnesses to come forward. It's just time for people to share their stories. At the same time, he worries about the Painesville victims. I apologize to all the victims for um, and, you know, people that we've already talked to or people that we're going to, con you know, continue to talk to about bringing up 27-year-old repressed memories, their um, involvement in this case could matter. Over the years, Jared and Jacob's mother, Patty Wetterling, have become yes. friends. I'm so grateful for Jared and Joy digging. She, too, is hoping someone will come forward for the Painesville victims, for Jared, and for Jacob. I do think there's a strong possibility that they could be connected. Every single one of these victims needs answers and are they tied to Jacob? Let's find out. And again that story aired in May of 2014. Now today it was revealed that in the past few months investigators using new DNA technology found that evidence in Jared's case is a DNA match to Daniel Heinrich. Today Jared texted me saying the arrest is a bittersweet victory and I personally believe actually that his willingness to go public, to push for information, to share his very painful story is one of the reasons that we're seeing this amazing development today. Yeah. Well, it's brave. Right. And like he said, you know, people don't want to have to talk about these terrible things that happened to him 26, 27 Absolutely. years ago. And you have to admire his courage for doing that. Absolutely. He's a hero. You, you know, the thing that I was uh, just wondering about, I know a lot of people are, I mean, people are going to just be abhorred by the fact that Danny Heinrich's DNA is related to Jared's case and legally you can't yeah. do anything about it because of the statute limitations. D did you talk to him about that, you know, Jared? I, I did not talk to him about it today. I have talked to him about it in the past. He's known that for years, and he insisted the reason that he was going public, the reason he was sharing his story was not for himself, not for his own case, although he did want to find out who, who had done it, mm -hmm. but he really felt that by coming forward he could help the Jacob Wetterling case and he could help these pain, painful victims, and he's done that. He's really done that. Boy, that's big, right? Yeah. I mean, instead of seeking it for your own good, to do yeah. it for someone it's else. It's incredibly courageous. Yeah. Thank wow. you, Esme. Right. Thanks, Esme.
And again, officials are asking anyone with information to call the Stearns County Sheriff, and those phone numbers are 320-259-3700 or 320-656-6625. The National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, that number is 1-800-THE-LOST. Chris, so much news.